Hello, Leo. Welcome to your weekly reading for June 17th to the 23rd. This is for Leo and Leo Rising, and we're going to jump right into it, Leo. This is a big week, especially for you, okay? Especially for you, Leo. There's a lot of things happening now. You know that after all those crazy, hugely auspicious aspects, energies that we had the past two months, okay? A lot of rare, one-of-a-kind aspects really pushing you in this new direction, really blowing your sails in this new direction into this new frontier. Everything is changing for you, Leo. So everything is really changing. It really does feel like a Starburst commercial, all right? The juice is loose. The juice is loose. Does anybody get that reference? Anyway, you see we kick it off on Monday. This is when we have, you know, right for, right off the bat, a huge shift into cancer season, okay? But we started off with Mercury and Venus moving into Cancer, and they're going to conjunct. They're moving together at the same degree, okay? At the same degree, they're going to have this powerful conjunction, this really nice, strong charge, okay? They're arm in arm right now. And so they're leaving Gemini. They're moving into your 12th house. Cancer rules your 12th house, and that is the subconscious. It's hidden things. It's, uh, you know, intuition, spirituality. It's also... uh, compassion. And it's really interesting because of what cancer itself represents. You know, cancer is such an emotionally driven sign. It's a very sensitive sign. Uh, It's a very intuitive sign. Okay. So you could find yourself really heightened uh, intuitively. Okay. For, for the next month, for the next month. All right. Also really spending time. uh, What is it? Clearing the attic. Clearing the attic, all the things that, remember, if, if you saw your last week's reading, I talked a lot about this because Neptune is also hugely at play here as well. And we'll talk about that. We'll talk about that. But first, you know, uh, uh, and it's just surrendering things that are holding you back, especially your mindset and just things up here. You need to make room for new things to come through. Okay. Now, uh, the first things first is, yeah, so we're moving into uh, cancer season. But first, we have the conjunction. We have Mercury and Venus moving into cancer. Now, uh, this is you moving into bear mode, okay? Bear mode. And when I say bear mode, I'm talking like uh, uh, Care Bear, okay? Care Bear, Mama Bear, Berenstein Bears. Cancer is all about home. It's all about family. It's all about this enduring love and relationships and that feel good aspect, that nurturing, compassionate, uh, compassion. And you, this is going to be really, really nice. It's all about the feels now. Okay. It's all about the feels and you will definitely have a lot of focus on home, family, relationships, everything that I said earlier and through this like really nice, uh, large emotional capacity, but also intuitive capacity. Uh, even romance is going to be highlighted around this time. So, you know, the fact that they're all moving, they're moving at zero degree. I mean, like they're moving, they're moving. Okay. Venus and Mercury. And so at the very start of the week, right before we move into cancer season on Thursday. So this is the beginning of this new chapter in your life. Okay. And so again, this could you just be being on this really nice spiritual level, really again, trusting your intuition and a lot of different matters and, uh, and, and, and clearing things from your subconscious things that you're just like, okay, bye, 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 bye. All right. In sync, was it in sync or it was in sync, right? Uh, and so that's what, okay. So let me tell you about Venus. Venus is moving into Cancer until July 11th. So you've got Venus here until July 11th. This is all about kindness, it's all about uh, matters of the heart, matters of the heart. You know, we're talking about Venus here, love, relationships, also creativity, okay? Also, creativity, money matters could be a thing as well. But in terms of like taking care of others, that kind of money matters, right? Very nurturing energy, protective energy. Uh, Loyalty is going to be a big thing around this time as well. So if you saw your monthly forecast, Leo, I did say that this is that aspect. It's like laying in bed with your kids or your dog or, you know, your your new Taylor Swift album, whatever. You know, it just this really nice, nice, fuzzy feeling that it's, it's really special. It's really nice. It's this beautiful softness that I like. And now, Vir- and then Mercury moves into.
into cancer, okay? So Mercury's moving into cancer for the rest of the month, all right? So remember, cancer is very emotionally driven. So this is the way that you may find yourself communicating for the uh, next four weeks, okay? Just through the heart, through the heart, all right? And so uh, even thinking, uh, it's like your heart is really leading the way uh, around this time. Uh, so really embrace this energy. I know like you are a fire sign, a lot of fire signs, a lot of people that are very active and on the go, they could really, really feel this slowdown because remember Mars is also in Taurus and, and that'll be for the rest of the month as well. And so it's really asking you to just slow down and, and, and just have those heartfelt melt moments with your family, with your children, with your friends, with your lover, whoever it is, just feel grounded and rooted and feel this slowdown where you can absorb all this love. Okay. There's so much loving energy going around this time. So, uh, speaking of love, I love this. All right. I love this. And again, this Mercury and cancer really is like poetry in motion. It feels really good. So a lot of the things that you could say would be very healing. A lot of the things uh, people could be telling you are just like healing and very soulful and really nice, really nice. Now on Thursday, June 20th, we've got the sun moving into cancer. This is really big. This is a uh, welcome to the longest day of the year, by the way. Longest day of the year. We are officially in summer. We're officially in summer and winter in the Southern Hemisphere. Solstice time. This is absolutely amazing but with it being the longest day of the year you got extra time you got extra time to do a lot of those loving things that you want to do okay really really working with your heart chakra i really love this i really love this you know the sun is uh it's in the moon sign it's in the moon sign you know the moon rules cancer so with the fact that Venus and Mercury are here as well, really amplifying that energy. So it's 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 love, it's relationships, it's feeling secure in uh, love, relationships, home, family, everything that I mentioned earlier, okay? Even healing could be a really big thing right now. This is you really tapping into your sensitive sign. You know, cancer is such a, yeah, it's a, it's a feminine sign. So tapping into that feminine side of yours, that softness that's really, really, really sweet and nice. And don't be surprised if you are a little bit more emotionally driven this month, okay? It is like, like for instance, like if you see a, a, a baby in a stroller at the park or a puppy, uh, you could just, like, it's like, oh my God, you know, like it's that kind of like loving, loving energy. Definitely like pulling at your heartstrings, even like wearing your heart on your sleeve, that kind of energy. So you see the big difference from, from how May was, all right? Now, uh, the one of the reasons why it you know, actually, the first half of the week might be doubly so for you than any other sign in terms of what cancer represents, because a moon is we're kicking off the week with a moon in Scorpio. OK, now the moon in Scorpio, Scorpio rules your fourth house. And so you see that overlap there with cancer season, moon in Scorpio uh, in your fourth house of home and family and your significant other and, you know, all those matters. So. Uh, and Scorpio being a water sign as well. So that's double the emotion. So you could really feel emotionally like empowered, uh, emotionally driven. You just, you, you'll, you'll feel this energy. Now the moon and, uh, moon, you know, the moon of Scorpio will actually be opposite Mars, but let me tell you about this. This is going to be interesting because right now we are on the brink. Like I said, this new frontier. And I say that because Jupiter and Pluto are freshly in new signs, okay? Jupiter just moved in, into Gemini for, you know, the first time in 12 years just a few weeks ago. Pluto moved into Aquarius at the beginning of the year, but it's such a slow-moving planet. It's it's still very new. I mean, it moved like a degree. It's got to be there for 20 years. So you have all this air energy. Now you've got Venus, Mercury, and the Sun moving into Cancer, water sign, right? You also have Saturn and Neptune in Pisces, water sign. So it's all about this air and water energy, okay? Now, Mars is in Taurus. Remember, Mars is in Taurus right now. And so mm, Taurus... Earth sign, okay, representing Earth. So what I want you to think is, uh, I want you to like just visualize a skipping stone across the surface of a lake, okay? But it's as if a two-year-old threw that stone. It's like plop, plop, plop. 
And that's because of this slowdown that the universe wants you to just really embrace right now. Remember, Mars and Taurus is a really major slowdown, okay? Really big slowdown here. All right. And so uh, it really is going to be all this water, air energy that you're really going to feel. But that Mars, that action, that drive, it's being more practical, being more thoughtful, OK, about moving forward with your passions, with your ambitions, being very grounded about it. So really embrace this slowdown right now. Really embrace, uh, uh, embrace this slowdown, OK, because uh, you we're coming out of all the squares. We're coming out of the Saturn squares, the Neptune squares. But at the same time, we have the Sun squaring Neptune now. All right. So remember, Saturn and Neptune are in your eighth house of transformation of death and rebirth you are going through a huge transformation this is happening right before the full moon in capricorn which we're going to talk about in a second but remember what i said if you didn't see last week's reading i talked about neptune at be it's at 29 degrees neptune is about to go retrograde with saturn they're about so it's all about seeking your truth, holding on to your truths, okay? Taking your time, being patient through that, okay? Being patient through that. And that's what's going to get you ahead. That's what's going to get you uh, uh, closer to your finish line. Being your authentic self and knowing your authentic self, that's going to make all the difference here, okay? It really is. Remember, Neptune is that fog. It's that fog. You just got to, it's a veil. You got to cut through the veil, all right? Honestly, it's like standing at a vending machine, right? You got your dollar bill in the thing. And then you got you got a lot of different options. You got a lot of different options. And you're like, should I get the Fritos or should I get the Cheetos? Or should, you know, maybe it's the box of raisins calling to me. You got to know. What does your gut literally what does your gut it tell you to do what is you've got to know what you want all right because when you know what you want it's going to feel so satisfying when you get it when everything starts making sense for you when you cut through that neptune fog okay with the sun squaring neptune uh and through a karmic lens always through this karmic lens now uh friday and you probably picked your leos y'all got the y'all got the nerds didn't you y'all got the nerds or the snickers bar one of those two friday june 21st we got the full moon in capricorn okay now if you saw your monthly forecast you know this is a very unique full moon it's at one degree therefore the full moon we have in uh july that's going to be in capricorn too so we have two capricorn full moons back to back all right that one's going to be at 29 degrees and literally on the same day on uh, uh, a date uh uh august 21st no, august july 21st okay so this uh friday june 21st full moon in capricorn remember something's coming to an end some there's a culmination happening that's what full moons do all right you're coming to the end of something but this is only part one of it all right now the fact that the capricorn rules your sixth house there's a couple things that could be coming to uh, an end, a culmination, even a turning point where you have this moment of clarity. Remember, full moons illuminate, right? So it's in your sixth house. Sixth house is everyday activities, your routines, your entire life could be changing now, Leo. You could be changing everything. It would be like that. Like when I say that, like um, you know, the sixth house rules work, right? So it could be you leaving one job or one profession for a completely different one, uh, and maybe there's different parts of it. Like you work from home now, where you can you know bring your dog to the office, and you have different colleagues, and you have a different job title. Just remember things are going to change for you and a lot of y'all are already feeling that remember mars and taurus is in your 10th house of career so there's still career activity happening for you okay uh and if you're not here for a career whatever you're exerting all your energy into that you want to be known for all right so keep that in mind the sixth house also rules health and wellness and fitness so you could be thinking of starting some new wellness routine switching things up maybe you're a pilates person but you recently got into calisthenics or whatever it is whatever it is there is something where it around health and fitness that may resonate with you okay i just got my annual physical all right i just got my annual physical and guess what i found out I'm overweight, so I got to work on that. I got to work on that. But even still, like, y'all, there's got to be something around this full moon, okay? Just keep that in mind, all right? Keep that in mind. Now, regarding this full moon, I actually love it, all right? I do love it. Sure, it's squaring Neptune. But what did I say earlier? As long as you know what you want and you can cut through that fog, 
you're going to be fine. As long as you, your authentic self, you tap into your authentic self, you're going to be absolutely fine. Okay. Mars is sex styling Mars this day. Oh, my diddly days. That's amazing. That's amazing. Okay. That's going to be, uh, what did I say it is? Mars is going to, Mercury. Yeah, Mars and Mercury. Uh, sex cells are very harmonious. All right. So this is really like putting your mouth where your heart is. All right. This aspect is helping support you in communication and thinking. But a lot of work related. Remember, Mars is in, in, in your 10th house of, of career. So, uh, but the other thing that is really great about this full moon is the weekend. All right. The moon will still be in Capricorn. And so uh, Moon and Capricorn is a little bit more serious, but it's prioritizing. Remember, Saturn is all about structure. Capricorn is all about structure. So this is you restructuring your life in some way, but you're possibly already doing it because remember those Saturn squares that we've recently been ha ha having. So you could be in this process of completely restructuring your life and prioritizing those structures in your life and even having a break through because Saturday uh, the moon will trine Mars okay and then Sunday the moon will trine Uranus both planets that are in Taurus all right your 10th that's a career or fame fame public recognition honors achievements social status all right let's get to your okay let's do it Leo 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 um Ooh, Leo. Okay, so this is for Leo. <laughs> I forgot my lines. This is for Leo, Leo rising, Leo moon. If you want to read for any other placements in your chart, you are absolutely welcome to if you want more insight in those areas, okay? Uh, but let's get to it, Leo. Let's see what's going on for you for June 17th. Ooh, blah, blah. June 17th to the 23rd. Okay, Leo. Uh, I do a traditional cult of craft spread. It really does offer the best overview. If we need to pull clarifiers, oh yeah, we will. We will. You know we will. Uh, secondly, Leo, this is one of those days where I need my glasses. You're probably seeing that I'm like squinting at y'all. I'm like, what? Where are y'all? Uh, but either way, y'all are amazing. You know that, Leos. Are you know you know you are and. Hello, your birthday season is right around the corner, right around the corner. So, of course, you're going to be going through a lot. You know, a lot of people do that through their birthday seasons, right? Like right before the birthday season, during the birthday seasons, they're processing a lot. Okay, so let's get started. Holy shish, uh, holy shrimp. You want a mic drop? I, I mean... What can I say? What can I say? I mean, uh, <laughs> wow. Uh, wow. Okay. So uh, let's get started. You're good. You absolutely, you're uh, really, 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 really good. You got the six of pentacles. I love the fact that you got the six of pentacles. One of my favorite cards, six of pentacles is, you know, sharing the wealth. It's this generosity, this feeling of generosity is this feel good energy. You know, we talked about that, you know, with everything moving into cancer season, you're going to feel, you know, it's in your 12th house. It's just, just all this compassionate energy uh, and kindness. It's all this you know, in, in, in a lot of money energy too, with Venus moving into cancer, you could be thinking about that, but you could even having like moments where you're sharing the wealth. All right. You're sharing the wealth. You're helping others. You hear you're healing others. Okay. You're uh, in a way where you are kind of like this leader. Some of that people look up to like these two people that are receiving the help. Right. And you even see the scale in the man's hand, the very philanthropic man, this balance that it brings. Now, if you're seeking it, that it, it could have come through for you you could have received a lot of uh you know support finances even you could have had a situation where something really expanded your world all right but again there is a sense of more of this spiritual richness and expansion that's happening whoa you hear the church bells talk about wow Talk about timing. And I'm going to talk about time in a second, too. I'm going to talk about time in a second, and I want you to pay attention because it's showing up here. Now, you got the star in the heart of your spread, and you've got a soundtrack to this, too. 
This is absolutely amazing. The stars aligning for you in the best way possible. This is healing. This is wisdom. This is faith. This is having faith in yourself. This is having faith in the universe. This is uh, something growing for you. There's a lot of fertility and growth in this card. You can see it's, uh, well, it's card 17, okay? 17 equals 8. As you know, 2024 zero of eight maybe you didn't know that now you know eight by the way numerology prosperity success i mean you're you're good you're good you even see that all the stars are eight pointed there are eight stars here the other big big thing about this eight and why i'm bringing it up it references the strength card ruled by leo all right so i absolutely love this things are happening for you things are happening for you in this really big way okay now you got the six of cups I love the Six of Cups. I love the Six of Cups, all right? So Six of Cups really is... Um and it, it, I love all the sixes. You've got three sixes, okay? Uh, the Six of Cups is in your challenge area. So if you... It just seems like, you know, with all this 12th house activity, one thing that I want you to know about this 12th house, I did say that it is part you know, the subconscious, the unconscious, right? And so what is the subconscious? It's a place where we store our memories, all right? It could be a lot of different kind of, you know, memories that are from the past, especially, you know, childhood. You see the two kids here. This is a big card of nostalgia. And so there may be things this week that you may want to confront to unroot them so you can move forward, okay? So you can move forward and be comfortable with it, comfortable with moving forward and that's going to set you free and that's going to you know make all the difference all right this is such a you know six is all about harmonizing here right uh so it is just like unrooting things to the place where uh if it's something that has held you back or something that made you uh hard on yourself it's now time okay it's now time it's also like you know frank let me give you an example i think that you know like how i said earlier i went to the doctor i found out that i'm overweight it doesn't bother me because you know I was like a big kid when I was really, really young, which definitely had an experience, you know, like it, it was something that had this impact on me throughout, you know, my formative years. But then I got to a point where I was like, I don't care. I don't care because I am who I am. People see me as they see me. It's energy that attracts people. I'm still who I am. So do you remember? It's it's me being my authentic self. So that's 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 what I'm saying. It's like I got to that point where I unrooted all of those things that I was like, oh, I'm just, I'm not like, uh. like anyway, you get what I'm saying. Now you got the six L wands. Look at you. Look at you rising above. This is eminence. This is pure eminence here. This is, uh, you could even have an audience of people cheering you on. You could be getting a lot of support. I mean, you have three sixes here. This is absolutely amazing. This is a card of accomplishments, victory. It seems like you've got your uh, mindset on a goal. You're going for the finish line. A lot of work-related matters here for sure. A lot of work-related matters that are happening here. A lot of things that could be through partnerships uh, as well. Partnerships and work and even at love with love as well. Remember Pluto and Aquarius is in your seventh house of partnerships and relationships. So a lot of you are really starting to feel that. But this is great. You know this card is actually attributed to Jupiter and Leo. So it is a Leo card uh, that is in your crown, which is really amazing. And now you have the seven of pentacles in the root of your spread. So Leo, wow, wow. There is a there is a shift happening. You see that, you see that happening here, okay? You're going from the six of pentacles to the seven of pentacles. You got this shift happening. Uh, there's, it seems like, like I said, this week is a big shift anyway, moving all, you know, into cancer season. And after all the major aspects that we've been coming out of, oh yeah, there's been, even some of y'all may have felt a squeeze in terms of moving forward, okay? Moving forward uh, in a place where you are just in your happy place and on your path to enlightenment. But this is definitely taking that pause, taking that pause to consider, consider things. All right. Remember that uh, th there's going to be a huge, like a, a significant slowdown energy from last month, that last month, like boom, 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 boom. This is going to be a different month. So remember, just be in that moment, know what you want moving forward. Think about 
if you're thinking about the past, what have you learned from the past, okay? What are some things from the past that you can carry with you? And what are the things that are going to help you make that decision moving forward, all right? Uh, because that looks like you might take a little pause. Now you also have the Knight of Cups in your future. Absolutely amazing. It seems like you are on this quest to transform. Uh, a lot of love is being brought into your life right now. You see the Knight of Cups is in your future. Cups are emotions, love, relationships, feelings, intuition even. But it's the Knight of Cups. He's the knight in shining armor. All right. This is someone who uh, wants to share experiences with other people. You can see him even extending his cup out. All right. So, yeah, that partnership energy could be really strong. It could be a uh, career. It could be love and romance. Uh, it really whatever resonates with you. All right. But again, you have Aquarius. Pluto and Aquarius and your seventh house partnerships and relationships. You got Knight of Cups, which is Pisces. You got Saturn and Neptune in Pisces in your eighth house. So there's this sense of like relationships with there too. There's intimacy that's part of the eighth, eighth house as well as money. There may be some money matters as well. Remember, you have the six of pentacles and seven pentacles too. Uh, but it may be something that you're linking up with someone in, in some capacity. Uh, it could be you starting your own business. It could be you working with new different people. Uh, or even, you know, with your I don't partner at home, your significant other starting a side hustle or starting some sort of like enterprise or whatnot. Now, the thing that I was going to point out, which I think is just so interesting and it's so cool. I want you to be part of your transformation and I don't want you to resist it. Also, I want you to pay really close attention to time. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, I want you to be in a place where, you know, when you are enlightenment is in the is the present, right? It's the now. And so when you're aware in the now, when you're aware of everything that's happening around you, the fact that you're watching this video, maybe there's, you know, you know people eating behind you, the TV's on over there, the windows open, you hear birds chirping, whatever it is, being present it's going to make a really big difference. Okay. Sometimes you want to be in that place where you're feeling so much joy in the present where time just disappears and dissolves. And again, the reason I'm going to bring that up is because, well, two things here. So you have these three sixes and even though this is in your challenge area, it's still in your, uh, you know, spread. So six, 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 right? Um, here's the thing. Th six is in tarot. There's, a strong indication that whatever's happening this week, you're not doing it alone. Sixes out of all the pip cards, out of all the numbers, right? All the suits, they're the only number where there's multiple people, okay? Multiple people. You see the people cheering him on. You see, you know, multiple people here. There's two people here, even the guardian in the back. So it does seem like there are people that are part of your journey this week, okay? Which is going to be really nice. Now, the other thing is... 666, if you're into numerology, well, 666 means a lot of different things. For me, for me, 666 is time, okay? It's time. Now, Saturn is Kronos, time, all right? Now, Saturn, we've come out of the Saturn squares. Saturn is going to be a little bit more active soon, okay? A little bit more active. And again, Saturn is in your eighth house of your inner transformation, the transformation that you're going through. Do not resist your transformation with the Six of Cups there, okay? Go with what your heart wants. Now, I say it's time because there are 60 seconds in a minute. There are 60 minutes in an hour. There's 24 hours in a day to four equals six time it's time all right so uh it's also time for you to move forward in this wonderful direction i love the way you're moving forward you got these two white uh, you're good you're good you're absolutely good let's get to your stuff oh my goodness leo let's uh if you like this reading it would be great if you like subscribe leave comments let me know what's going on i'm going really deep with you i think i'm getting personal with you too all right uh and you know i love y'all y'all are amazing all right thanks so much leo uh yeah you're don't 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 do not play with me right now, Leo. I cannot even. You are, I mean, uh, yeah. I. You know, I wish I had like a 
cowbell or something that okay anyway you're good you got the queen of wands absolutely amazing just keep moving forward just keep moving forward you're going to be sitting in this throne the queen of wands is so charismatic she's so popular people gravitate toward her you already got people cheering you on you already got like all this support coming through where you could be that person supporting others but you're spreading that gratitude you're spreading that energy you're raising people's energy levels i absolutely love that uh this is uh someone who's very entrepreneurial uh, by the way, Queen of Wands, remember, you have a lot of career energy here that's really nice. And she gets whatever she wants. She gets anything that she wants. And this is also wands or passions, ambitions, things like that. Now, Ace of Swords in your external factors area. Are you going to have a breakthrough? 1000%, especially of the mind. You Remember, you could be having that shift in the way that you see things. You're going to be in your subconscious. There's going to be a lot happening there. Like this is going to be an absolutely big week, but a lot of things are changing for you. Aces are changed. So are swords. It's a big card, okay, of change. And it is the biggest sword in the deck. Swords, the mental suit, okay? So you could have this mental breakthrough. You could have brilliant ideas come through. You could have just so, contract. We're moving into a, a place where we're about to have all this contract energy. Energy. And yes, it can be marriage as well. It could be something that you're forming with someone else, especially with a Knight of Cups and the star here. Now, you also got the lovers. Hello. Uh, what did I say about partnerships and relationships? There you go. All right. So a lot of y'all are looking for that perfect, like, oh, that I feel it in my soul. It can be work. It can be career. It can be a sad hustle. It could be a tennis partner. It could be your lover. It could be existing partnerships really ascending on a whole other level, all right? This is also self-love too. Now, you also got the eight of ones in your final outcome. You're good to go. You're just boom, 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 boom. Leo, you're great. Eight of ones, you see the eight ones zipping through the air. They're in their happy places. And what I'm gonna show you, what makes your spread even more special and rare, yep, rare. You've got a rare spread here. Uh, well, this is, again, remember well, a lot of career activities, things are going to move fast for you. And I want you to take action and I want you to move fast with it. Remember, be part of your transformation story. You want to have a say in your reality that you create, right? So this is really amazing, but it does look like something's about to land. Like I said, even a contract seems or some sort of commitment, but, uh, you got the, uh, two cards where everything's alighting for you. These ones are zipping through the air really fast, but look how aligned they are. So, uh, you're good, Leo. One of your best uh, weekly readings for sure. I mean, I don't even know what to say. This is just like, you're you're absolutely amazing. Leo, thanks so much. Uh, and uh, next week is when, yeah, we got some big, we got some big stuff. We got some big stuff that are really great. We'll talk about it next week, but you're definitely moving in this really nice direction. Thanks so much, Leo. I will see you next week. All right, bye-bye.